Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the combined agenda and regular meeting of the Monroe Township Council. Uh, the agenda meeting is called to order. Would we all please rise to honor our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Councilman Charles DePiro? Here. Councilman Michael Markell? Here. Councilman Rupa P. Siegel? Here. Council Vice President Terrence Van Zora? Here. Council President Miriam Cohen? Present. Would you please read the Sunshine Law into the record? In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, it is hereby announced and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting that adequate notice has been provided by the following. One, posted on the bulletin boards within the municipal building on December 29th, 2023, and remains posted at that location for public inspection. Two, printed in the Home News Tribune and the Cranberry Press on December 29th, 2023. Three, posted on the Monroe Township website. And four, sent to those individuals who have requested personal notice. In accordance with Chapter 3, Section 17 of the Monroe Township Code, public comment shall be limited to five minutes unless further time is granted by the Council President. Thank you. Uh, item five on our agenda is the honor of the Council. And all of you tonight are going to call upon our mayor, the Honorable Virginia. Hey, everyone. So, uh, is this working? Just I put it know. on, Mayor. I need a course in microphoning. Now we can rock and roll. Okay. We're good. We're good. So, in life, there's events that happen that you see. Sometimes very moving, but that human spirit that we all have, right? Sometimes something happens. Well, my friends, we're here to honor somebody when that something happens to you. And we have a good Samaritan here that needs to be recognized. Now, when I saw on the news, when I had heard from the chief of police in regards to there was a fire at Rossmore um, very early morning and a good Samaritan knocked on the door to try to get that person out of the burning house. And you think about that moment, right? It's natural as a human. Once in a while, you get that thought and then you say, boy, I wonder what I would do, right? Well, what would you do? And it gets you thinking. And my friends, there's strife in the world. There's negativity. Uh, gosh darn it, there is positivity as well. And that happened here in Monroe Township. One of our own citizens helping another in need without regard, you come to that moment and you see something. What do you do? Well, my friends, Thomas Galindo from Rossmore did something, something amazing. I had the opportunity to talk to Mr. Galindo and his family prior to the meeting. And um, when he walked into my office, the first thing I said is just, wow. So with that being said, very few words. Wow. Thomas Galino, Galino, Certificate of Heroism in recognition of your outstanding bravery and self-sacrifice in the face of imminent danger, the esteem, respect, and congratulations of the Township of Monroe are hereby extended. You make us proud. 
today, April 1st, 2024, something more than wow, something that you could put on your wall. You can show your coworkers that you, hey, no more ribbon, I did good, I did good, and you did very good. And I'm, again, behalf of myself, all of the council members, the administration, but all the citizens, there should be more Thomas Galinos in the world. Thank you, my friend. Please come up and accept this. Like a good Samaritan again, riding off into the sunset. I'd like to ask uh, Council President if uh, we could potentially just take a, a moment for some pictures with the Council. Okay. And I would like to and check. Then, uh, and then obviously if there's any comments that need well, to be made by, we're all by the Council members. Yes, thank you. We will do both those things. I'm going to ask Councilman Markell. This is your ward, and you are a resident of Rossmore. If you would like to make a comment first, please, sir. Uh, yes, I would. That was a very nice uh, introduction the mayor gave. Uh, Tom and I go back a long way, about 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, we're, neighbor, we're, we're neighbors in Rossmore, and I'd like to just say um, not much to add to what the mayor said, but thank you so much um, in a world that we see so many terrible things every time we turn on the TV. It's great that something um, so fantastic happened in our, especially so close to home. And I just want to thank you for, as I say, doing the right thing. But it takes a lot to do the right thing. Not everybody does the right thing. Uh, they hesitate. They go, what if, maybe, who knows. But you didn't do You did the right thing. And I just personally, and uh, as, as a member of the council, thank you so much, Mr. Galeno. I appreciate it. Someday I can call you Tom and you call me Mike, okay? Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to ask our council vice president, please. Thank you. As the mayor said, you find yourself in a situation. You see danger. Some people respond to the danger. Some people back off. It doesn't make one person bad, the other person good. But when that one person does react, it makes you special. We have a word for that. It's called hero. You are a true hero of the township of Monroe. We thank you. Councilman Shapiro. Mr. Galino, I'd just like to say, um, on TV, I watch a show that says, what would you do? And when I watch that show, I say, boy, you know, this show, what, how can I watch this show and really enjoy it? And I really, I look forward to watching that show. As our mayor and the council says, we are, you are our hero right here in Monroe. And what you've done, I could, as a fire commissioner for 21 years, I hear the stories, I see it. And this, this is live in the moment of, of what you've done, courage. Because a lot of people, they tell you, run away from a fire, call. And, they, and when our fire first responders go to a, a, a situation, they don't know what they're walking into. And they're trained and they're professionals. You went in there being a hero to our community and we thank you. And, and you know, we don't take that too lightly. So thank you very much and, and God bless you. Councilwoman Siegel, please. Thank you. Mr. Galino, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, I remember seeing or reading an article that you happened to be running late that work that day to work or a couple minutes late, leaving a little bit later. So we're thankful that you left a little bit later because you were able to help out a neighbor with your bravery and courage. So thank you so much. Those who save a life save a generation. There are no other words other than that. You've honored us by being here and allowing us to honor you. It would be good if we took a five-minute break. Should we need five minutes, Alan? Alan coordinates all the photographs in this room. Three minutes, so we'll please take a brief break to take some pictures.
this agenda meeting. The additional proclamations that will be made this month are Autism Awareness Month, Arab American Heritage Month, SEC Awareness and Appreciation Month, National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, Education and Sharing Day, and Arbor Day. Item six, would the clerk please read the ordinance for introduction at this April 1st agenda meeting. Ordinance 04-2024-007. Ordinance providing for signal improvements at Old Bridge Englishtown Road and Mounts Mills Road in and by the Township of Monroe in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating 2,300,000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of 2,190,000 bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Ordinance 04-2024-008, Ordinance Amending Chapter 97 of the Code of the Township of Monroe entitled Tree Preservation. Thank you. Item 7 of the resolutions for consideration under the consent agenda at the April 1st, 2024 regular meeting, R4-2024-102 through R4-2024-127. Any council members wishing to remove the resolutions from consideration as a body? Please, Councilman DePiro. Thank you. The only one I have is R4-2024-115. 115. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they wish removed? Okay. Yeah, a lot of resolutions this week. We'll move to the public comment section of the agenda meeting. Please remember that in this portion of the meeting, public comments are lim limited to agenda items, only five minutes per speaker. May I have a motion to open the public comment section, please? Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Anyone wishing to address the council, please remember to come forward. Stating your name and address for the record. George Gunkelman, Monroe. Um, ordinance number six uh, about the signalization. Is that uh, a shared uh, cost or is that all the, you know, it's, it's, they're both county roads, I believe. So. How much of that is this some part of a negotiated deal or what? Mr. Weinberg, please. Yeah, this is an agreement and it's sort of a standard county agreement. Um, one side of the road, two sides are Mounts Mills, the other side is uh, Old Bridge uh, English Town Road. And the standard agreement is usually, uh, and this is what is in this case, uh, land acquisition is done by the municipality, uh, uh, design of the project is split 50-50, final construction administration is 100% county, um, hard costs for the actual light itself are 50-50, and any police protection um, is the township side. So that's the standard agreement, which was approved by the council previously. Okay. And just the ballpark idea of the breakout, uh, how much of that is land? Uh, sure. So I think it cost us, uh, I would say, close to 250000 to do the different easements. We had done that previously. Yeah. Um, the 50% of the design is about 270,000. Um, the total construction cost is about 3.5, so that's 1.7 each. And then the police uh, is an allowance up to, I think it's about $200,000, depending on the length of the project. Fine, thank you. Um, I, there's in the consent agenda um, item 113, which is purchasing uh, two, uh, F550 uh, of trucks. Um, is, the number seems uh, abnormally high. Is there some reason for that? I mean, we're, we're getting, the, if I could, Council President? Yes, please. You know, we're getting these through uh, state contract, and they are also uh, fully loaded in terms of they're coming with a snow plow and the salter as well. Um, it's actually hard to get trucks now. Um, so this is this is through state contract. So um, obviously, I think the price has gone up over time. Well, we're seeing that with ambulances as well. Um, but this is a, a negotiated price um, through the state. 
and it does replace a 2006 uh, unit number 94, which has close to 100,000 units and is somewhat failing, and uh, 2008, uh, which has 84,000. So the ones that we have are somewhere between 18, I'm sorry, 18 and uh, 16 years old and, and sort of past their useful life. Kind of a shocking number. Um, I have what is more a comment than a question. Uh, sure, please. Madam Chairman. Uh, item 108, uh, contract for um, uh, ambulance maintenance, parts and repairs. Um, at some point, uh, are we going to entertain having a municipal garage for maintaining things? I know the school has a garage for maintaining their school buses. I think Public Works maintains their own trucks, uh, but we have other groups. I don't know who, I don't know who maintains the, the police department and, and stuff, but it, it would seem that maybe there's a tipping point where it would be viable for us to have our own in-house maintenance. If I could answer. Please come. Yes. So we, we do have that, and we do on the ambulances, we do a lot of the basic oil changes and basic stuff. Um, the, the ambulances are pretty unique, and so we do use a specialized company when, when something significant happens that really focuses only on ambulances. Um, so I would say for most of our equipment um, and our cars and vehicles, we handle it internally ourselves if it's not if it's something we have to farm out, we do. But historically, for ambulances and the specialization of this unique product that we get, we've been using VCI for a while, and they really, they're the ones who are experts in that brand of, of ambulance. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Thank That's you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Please come forward. Again, your name and address for the records, please. Gary Busman, 7 Monarch Road, Monroe. Um, 2024117. Uh, can someone please explain to me what that contract entails? Sure. Mr. Thank Weinberg, you. you're sure. on. So this is through the Historic Commission um, over by the Dye Farm. Across from the Dye Farm is a, another house that moved over there probably 20 years ago from England Road. Sometimes it's been called the England House. Sometimes it's been called the Baird House. I understand it was built in 1830 and, and different owners lived in it um, along uh, England Road over the years. And so this is a conceptual preliminary design to look at how best to stabilize the house. It was moved there 20 years ago. I believe there was some work done on the roof. And the Historic Commission is looking uh, with this contract to move forward to figure out a plan of how to further stabilize the house so it can last and then ultimately, I believe, go for grants and other resources. Um, I just get surprised sometimes at what professionals charge. I being a professional, I know what I charge. Sometimes I believe it was excessive, but based on the situations, it may be warranted. I just wanted to question that fact, so thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else, please come forward. Again, stating your name and address for our records. Prakash Purup, Prithvi Dina Drive. I have uh, questions about I agree with this, but I have a question on R4 2024-116. Uh, charging stations at Senior Center, Library and Recreation Center. The question is, how many charging stations at each st location, mm -hmm. and how fast they charge? It is five miles per hour, or 25 miles per hour, or 200 and 125 miles per hour. Are these pay or charge free? So those, and then after that, I have comment. Mr. Weinberg, please. So this would be uh, two, two charging stations at each of the three locations uh, mentioned there. We will be coming forward um, uh, probably in the May meeting to talk about how much, uh, what the cost will be. We'll be making a proposal to the council. It's generally going to be along the lines of the first hour or two at the location it costs sort of what it costs us to provide the electricity. After that, if you leave your car there all day, it goes up. It's sort of a credit card process. Yeah. And it's a state-of-the-art machine, but I don't know. You know, it's, it's much better than the, one, the old one we have at the library. It'll be brand new. Um, I'll have to get you the answer on what the actual yeah. charging yeah. component is. My request is have a faster charging. Let the customer pay for that. 
because we have very few. I've seen that I've gone to Chicago and rest of the places. No one is using when it is charging five, five hours, you know, uh, you know, five miles per hour. So my request is, it costed me $800 to put a charging in my house, which charges 25 miles per hour. So uh, that is the request, okay? Uh, so please consider that, I appreciate. That is a good funding, let us use it. Uh, next is the construction, road construction in South Middlesex Avenue and Fitchgard Avenue uh, improvement project and uh, at $593,000. Uh, um, uh, I think this is in a warehouse area. So what is this construction? Uh, Mr. Rezimowicz, is this your turn? Sure, Council Thank President. You. How many uh, miles also it is? How many miles? Sorry for that. Council President, this, is, uh, this was a NJDOT local freight grant that we received. Um, this is for South Middlesex Avenue and Fitzgerald Avenue in, in the industrial park area. Okay. Uh, we received uh, 11 bids on this project. So, so the, it was quite substantial number of bidders. Uh, the low bid is uh, $593,877. Uh, the question is, uh, it is repaving, uh, what, when it says construction, I was not clear what, what type of construction it is. Council President, uh, so this is a reconstruction of the roadway. Um, there'll be uh, milling, curbing, uh, some curbing, um, okay. sidewalks um, at the handicap ramps, and um, line striping okay. after the paving. Uh, and how many miles it is? I don't have the mileage. Okay, it's all that's of, okay. It's South Middlesex Avenue and it's yeah. Fitzgerald Avenue. It is nice to get grants. So we got how much grant we got? The grant more than covers the uh, the the low bid price. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Please come forward now. Council President, I just stand corrected. It, the grant is five hundred and fifty thousand, uh, and the low bid was five hundred ninety-three thousand. Please, your name and address for the records. Good evening, Lucy Alpanos, 1208 C. Lindero Plaza, Monroe. On 007, is this the total amount? Are we expected to pay, you know, are we expected to pay more? I'd like to know how much was, the business administrator broke down some numbers, but how much totally were we responsible for? Township is and how much not. And, and how much in the future are we responsible for? Uh, item 116, the charging station. Who regulates that? I know for gas stations, weights and measures regulates how much, how long. So what department or entity regulates the electric pumping stations and how much will it cost the resident to do that? And are we getting type two, type three, type one? What type of charging stations are we getting? Uh, 118, There's, that was very nice of whoever left this, uh, Mr. Cristiano. Cristiano left some money for the senior center, except in the bill on the website, it said there was an attachment A. The, I didn't see one, so what is attachment A that is referred to? Um, and while I agree that it's nice to get grants, come on, we all know it's like pay, from Peter's pay in poor, we all pay for everything, whether it's a grant, whether it's, you know, we're paying for it. So thank you for applying for the grants, but still somehow I think the taxpayers pay paying for it. So if I can get those answers to those questions. Sure. Mr. Weinberg, you? Yeah, I just want to make sure I didn't uh, yeah. miss the first one, so I apologize. Yeah. Can you just, if you don't mind, just The total, how much? Oh, right. That's how right. Much? Yeah. The, right. the total that was spent in, is there more projection of monies to be spent? So, so um, I did go through the costs earlier, if I could, Council yes, President. Yes, and, please. And once it does open, because I know that was the end of the question, once, I, once it does open, it is operated and maintained by the county. However, if uh, there's an Opticon on there, which is for emergency services, we maintain that one piece of it. But if the traffic light doesn't work or there's a problem with it, the county ultimately maintains it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the land acquisition was approximately 300,000, which I just is, wanted a total. I oh. you know. Well, I wasn't clear myself. I thought you wanted the breakdowns. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just want the total. So the total for us is 2.243 million, but that doesn't include the land. So that would be about 2.5 million. Two point five four three million. It doesn't include the police. That which, doesn't. That does include the police. Oh, it does. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
And then moving on to, what was it, 116? One, one, one. Yes, who regulates, how much is it gonna cost, what type are we getting? Right, so I'll have to get back to you on the type that we're getting, and Kevin is not here and he would be able to uh, explain it. But um, we, are, uh, we are going to bring forward an ordinance, uh, and we are allowed by ordinance, I believe, to set the rates, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, by hour. Um, and you see a lot of different towns doing that um, where they can do up to the first hour or second hour and have different rates going on. And the conventional wisdom now is that a lot of people make the first hour or two reasonable, certainly make sure that everyone's paying for their full electricity, but then try and make the rate go higher so people don't leave their car there you know, all day um, to, you know, to hog or whatever the right term is, the location. But I'll have to get back to you on the type of uh, uh, charging station yeah. that it is. It is Council President, if I can help Alan out okay. there. Okay, sorry. Okay. And, and, I, and I wanted to know who regulates it. Weights and I, measures. Yeah. Okay. I, I understood the third part of your question is who regulates these charging stations. Yes. Thank you. But You're with welcome. regard to the charger, they are type two or level two chargers. Okay. Let's see, 4,000 or something like that. Okay, that's two chargers, and that has some meaning to someone who is familiar with Yeah, there, there's, there's essentially three levels, as uh, Mr. Parab spoke about. Um, yeah. These are type type two or level two. And do we know if who is going to be responsible for assuring the accuracy of the meters? Is it weights and measures, or we don't have that information yet? I don't, I don't want to guess, so I well, have to we won't guess. We will find out, and we'll get back to you. All right, you're proving stuff, and you don't even know all the answers, but that's, you know. And how about the attachment A on uh, 118? Attachment A on the... That's referred to on the website. Oh, I'm so yes, I'm sorry. Your, your comment was that you went to the website in the Senior Center and attachment A, about, or you went to our website, and there was no description of the attachment A, what it meant. Mr. Warnberg, do you have that? Yeah, let me just look at it sure. for one second here. Sure. So I, hang on. I don't know if uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Shah wants to talk about that, but I, oh, it's right, sorry, it's right here on the back. So if that wasn't copied, I do have a copy here that I can certainly share with you. This is the list of the different uh, stocks uh, and bond notes that are available that equal the 33,000. The reason it says approximately 33,000 is I don't believe they've been sold yet. So when this all closes, this person who donated some of their, uh, through their will, some different stocks um, and bonds, when it closes, that final amount will be set. There is an attachment A listing the uh, bonds and the amounts, which I think is the stock numbers as well. Okay. So, and I apologize, I can certainly share that with you here if you want to come get a copy. It's on my screen in front of me as well. Okay. You have attachment, if the yes, I do. Now. goes. Yes, I do, attachment A. I didn't. He'll give in it the to back, you. I, you know what, I like to do my homework, and I didn't have the opportunity no, we know that. to do that. You know, okay, I, I will, I'll get a copy, you know. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the business administrator, because at the last meeting, I, I asked some questions about the audit and everything, and he suggested that my time was up, which, that's your job. And he apologized for that, and I appreciate that um, very much. No, no, it's nice to say it when it happens, though. Okay, you know, it was nice to say it privately. He should have said that night, you know, hey, Mrs. Panos, I, I apologize. I remember, I know what you meant, but that's okay. Next time, don't let him run the show. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Gazala Bora, One Miko Drive. I want to start by appreciating the charging stations. Need of the hour, I'm glad we're getting six of them. Very excited, actually. So thank you to the administration for making that happen. Sure, Gazala Bora, One Miko Drive. Um, and I don't know if it was audible, but I wanted to show my appreciation for the charging stations. My question, though, and please pardon my lack of knowledge, is on item 104. Uh, it talks about the extension of the introduction and approval of the Monroe Township uh, annual budget to May 6th. My question is, what is the, reg the general timeline and why is it being extended? Thank you. Sure. So uh, the council has the ability um, to extend the introduction. Sometimes we uh, introduce in April and sometimes we introduce in May. 
uh, in the COVID year, so I think we introduced in June. Um, so uh, this year our plan is to introduce in May um, and then adopt uh, hopefully at the following meeting. Um, so that is certainly allowed under Faulkner. The council just gives us the permission to do that. And is there, if I may ask a follow-up question, is there like a timeline where you have to finish it by, governed by the state or county? I mean, if I can, I've seen I've seen other towns do their budgets in October and November at the end of the year, which is you know pretty unusual. I think the DCA may get on them for that, but we've generally always done it in March or April okay. um, with that with that approval there. Thank you. <laughs> Your name and address for our records, please. Shell Arminio, 9 Nathaniel Street. Uh, before we get started, thank you for mentioning the Faulkner Act. I was at the State Library today because I wanted to look up our particular Faulkner Act. Do you have the exact number? I think there's different yes, there grades is. of the Faulkner Act. Which one are we in Monroe? We're Plan B. Weren't we Faulkner Plan B? We're B. I'm not aware of a number. So so they, I mean, my, I don't know if you want to go first or you want me to go first. Oh, you can go, always go okay. first. So so um, they updated Faulkner. There used to be like plans A, B, right. C, D, E, F, J. They merged them all into the optional municipal charter. We are historically the one that had um, three at-large seats, uh, sorry, two at-large seats and three ward seats, but we are generally the uh, optional uh, municipal charter, otherwise known as the Faulkner Act, and all the things associated with the Faulkner Act would come to us. Okay, but there were like five books in the library today, and I wanted to know which one specifically addressed our form of government. You I can't go no. through all, they were like huge you want to answer? law books. I'm going to refer to the- Our attorney will culture. continue your answer. The easiest would be to refer to the code, the code that's been passed on the, and I think it's 360, right, the degree, and that that is what we follow. That all the forms of government, everything we have to follow is on, on the municipal code. So it's municipal code 360? Yeah, it should be the 360, which is all the general code systems that everybody uses. I think you're you're on 360, right? Yeah, we're the uh, Faulkner Act, and I think they're all together now. It's all together, yeah. But it's basically you just you can Google m municipal code, even the township, and just click on it. There's an entire tab of all the rules and regulations that the township of Monroe follows. So it's, it's on our website? Correct. So of of everything, you can go to there website. and you can follow all the rules there. Where is that? On? I'm on so, the website constantly okay, and I so, haven't seen it. So you just put in the township and then in there you'll find entire websites, very user friendly, and you click on government and it'll be on there probably, and if you can't find it there, you go into the clerks and it'll be on that tab. And it'll be right there. Our, our, our wonderful clerk, Ms. Robbins. Is and that? if you want, I'll say afterwards and I'll even show you. That, that would be great. Okay, great. Okay. Um, my other, my other. So thank you for bringing that up. That was happened to be my concern today. Um, resolution R four two zero two four one zero four, approving the extension of the introduction and approval. Um, I don't think that's the one. Um, it was the one of the. I'm sorry, it's not O one. Might be O three. Overpayments. Yes. Sorry. Um, this is a very short resolution for overpayment. What is the amount of overpayments? Do we have that on 03 here? Mr. Weinberg. Uh, sure. What resolution number is that? I'll just. Oh, I'm sorry. The amount is here 136,315.76 cents. Is that all for one party? Or I'm sorry, Mr. Weinberg. 103. Resolution 103. Yep. Under Schedule A, there's a whole series behind there. Schedule um, A. Okay, yeah, again, not that? on not on the website. Okay, there's a Schedule A that lists each and every uh, uh, situation. Sometimes it's, for example, um, people may double pay their bill. Sometimes there's a credit if somebody becomes uh, permanently uh, veterans disabled. Um, in certain cases, if it's a state tax appeal, it would be a credit back to them. Right. And that is that is certainly listed under Schedule A um, within there. Um, so okay, so I went to the um, website today, and as you can see, I downloaded yes. all the resolutions, but it wasn't didn't come out on I that. So where is Schedule A on the website? Okay, I mean we could certainly ask the clerk to make sure that's included yeah. when we. When we print it. Sorry, I give you more okay. work, yeah. Ms. Robbins. No, no but, that's okay. That's but I mean that because it's you know the the part 
you're talking about one hundred and thirty six thousand dollars and it's very there's no other details so I'm looking at the it's details important. so we can make sure that you're able to look at it as well. Okay, so it's any it's any number of things cumulatively. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's it's both uh, state tax appeals. It's um, double payments. It's a variety of different things that the tax collector's office processes. Okay, and I think I have every month. That, yeah, tell um, the email address. Okay, Michelle, I can email that to you tomorrow if you'd like. That'd be great. Do you want me to? Do I have to email you? Or no, you think you'll I'll, remember? I'll take a note. Thank you. Take care of it. I owe an email to Tanya, though. I haven't gotten some information, but that's on me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else wishing to come before the council? Please do so now. Seeing and hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to close the com public comment period, please. Motion. Thank you. A second on that motion. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn the agenda meeting, please. Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion is meeting is adjourned. The agenda meeting is adjourned. The regular meeting is now called. Would like to call that to order. May I have a motion, please? Motion. No. Thank you. Second. Second. Roll call. Yeah. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. May I have a motion to approve the payment of claims for the run date of March? Council President, I have a yes. question on the, sure. bill, on the bill list. Sure. I had a question. Yes. Okay. Um, on page 11 of the bill list, there was uh, payments for Monroe Township uh, baseball uniforms. Um, it was approximately $9,500. I thought that the uh, Monroe Township Baseball Association receives payments from the, um, the parents or, or guardians of our, of our baseball players and all sports. Right. Mr. Weinberg, please. Right. My, my understanding is that when they, they do use uniforms for multiple years, but I believe the first time we buy the uniforms, we, we buy them ourselves. That's been our historical practice, but I'll certainly double back with, uh, with Mary Lang. Um, we've certainly done purchases like this many times. Before. Right, because when I um, talk to a lot of the residents that play, their children play a lot of sports, they, not only do they make payments, they also do services for each, which I was, when I was a, a parent, my kids played sports, we also volunteered. So either way, they, I think the taxpayer's paying twice. So I just want to make sure that um, the money does the money come to the township? Do we get any money from any of these baseball or associations or hockey or anything? We have historically uh, uh, supported the different in-town rec leagues. Um, it's certainly something during the budget process we could look at providing less support if you feel that's something um, that the parents could pay for more themselves. I can certainly get the details on that. It's all from our budget item. Baseball right. certainly listed in there as well. Okay, so if the money doesn't come to us, do we get an audit? Do we get a copy of the audits from each one of these, these uh, organizations? Do we get a copy of their audits? Right, Council. Please. Sorry. I believe the Rec Advisory Board gets a copy of, of all of the uh, audits from the different organizations okay. that we work with. Okay, and then the, the last question I had, um, I had a discussion with uh, Alan in reference to uh, a payment that we're making to the Hard Rock uh, Casino. For, uh, for the OEM. So um, it's $4,719. And that's for, uh, for as, as one of our residents just said, uh, we do, we get grants, which is great, but we also make payments as taxpayers. So we are sending 10 uh, residents or employees or volunteers, whatever, whatever they are, as far as the OEM is concerned, it's it's four thousand seven hundred nineteen dollars. It's on page twenty, and uh, I asked for a copy of of the statement, the bill, the PO, and also the people that are going. And I thank Alan for getting that for me. But I was just a little concerned because in the past, uh, mayor, council, and and attorneys uh, in the past in Monroe, we uh, they stopped making payments. 
for league municipalities or anything going for any yeah. kind of meetings. Uh, the attorney back then was Joel Shane, and he and he recommended that no payments would be made for any kind of uh, any kind of seminars or any kind of uh, events in Atlantic City. So I was a little surprised to see four thousand seven hundred nineteen dollars. Regardless of where the money's coming from, we're making the payments. So that that's my comment. I did respond on that if I could, yes. Council President. Yes, please do. Um, we did get a, we did starting about two years ago, get a $10,000 federal state grant to expand training for our Office of Emergency Management. And so starting about two years ago, we started attending on a regular basis with some of our key staff members on the OEM, the State Emergency uh, Management Conference down in Atlantic City. Um, it usually ranges from four to five days. We have some folks like people from EMS who will go down for the two-day component that is EMS, and then we might have our director of OEM there for, for all five days instead of coming back and forth. Um, the grant is specifically authorized to be used um, to be able to go to this conference, so I just wanted to share that publicly. Thank you. Thank you. That's continuing education for our excellent Office of Emergency Management. Uh, any May I go back to my motion, please? Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you, Council President. <laughs> You're welcome. May I have a motion to approve the payment of claims per the run date of March 27th, please? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. May I have a roll call? Councilman DePiro? No. Councilman Markell? Yes. Councilwoman Siegel? Yes. Council Vice President Banzora? Yes. Council President Cohen? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the following meetings as written and presented. The February 5th, 2024 agenda and regular combined meeting. Motion, motion. please. Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Banzora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We're moving to the ordinances for introduction. Again, could you please read the ordinance? Sure. Ordinance 04-2024-007. Ordinance providing for signal improvements at Old Bridge, Englishtown Road, and Mounts Mills Road in and by the Township of Monroe in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating 2300000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 2190000 bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof. Next, please. Um, you know what to do? No, we have to do that. Okay, do it separately. We're going to do these separately. Do these are, I need a motion to introduce Ordinance 04-2024-007. Please. Motion. Thank you. May I have a second on that? Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Fanzora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. The Motion ordinance. carries. Motion carries. Please let's do the second one, please. Ordinance 04-2024-008. Ordinance amending Chapter 97 of the Code of the Township of Monroe entitled Tree Preservation. And these amendments comply with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection recommendations. May I have a motion to please to motion. introduce this? Thank you. A second. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Vanzora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. We now move to the resolutions. Would you, clerk, please state the resolutions for consideration minus the one of sentence. Resolutions R4-2024-102 through R4-2024-127 with the exception of R4-2024-115. Very good. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you. A second on that, please. Second. Thank you. Roll call. <coughs> Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Vanzora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item seven is the resolution that's been removed from the consent agenda. That is resolution R4 2024-115. Motion, please. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Abstain. Councilman Markell. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. 
Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We will now move to our reports. We begin with our administrator on my extreme left, Mr. Weinberg. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council President. Uh, just a couple of comments. One, did want to mention that coming up on April 16th at 6 p.m., uh, the representatives from the BFI Republic over at the landfill will be having a meeting with residents to talk a little bit about the recent uh, smells and outdoor air in the area at 6 p.m. Um, township folks will be there as well, and they've, they operate the landfill, so they've invited local residents to come, and I just wanted to mention that. Um, as well. Um, again, that's April 16th at 6 p.m. The BFI will be meeting with uh, some local uh, residents at the entrance to the landfill um, uh, at the intersection of Lonnie and Lori. Um, I did want to also commend uh, the township engineer uh, regarding the 11 bids on the South Middlesex project. Certainly a great price underneath the uh, engineer's estimate and, um, and certainly using mostly grant money, so uh, thrilled about that as well. Also, uh, thank the council for approving the DPW trucks uh, that were ordered. Uh, we're hopeful that they'll be here by next winter, and both the trucks that they're uh, going to be replacing are sort of uh, desperately in need of being replaced, so we're excited about that as well. So thank you very much, Council President. You're welcome. Mr. Rasmowitz. Thank you, Council President. Um, uh, my report covers uh, updates on some new projects. Uh, first off, some traffic signal, Apple Garth Road and Joan Warren Way. The county anticipates construction starting on that in the next couple of weeks. Um, with regard to the Monroe Township Police Station building addition, that project has started. Work is underway. They started with the site work in the back and are installing uh, the storm sewer system at this time. And lastly, as Alan mentioned, uh, South Middlesex Avenue uh, road reconstruction is covered under a local freight grant, and uh, the low bidder was P&A Construction out of Colonia, New Jersey, and uh, we look forward to getting that started uh, in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank That's my you. report. Council reports. I'm going to begin on my extreme left. Councilwoman Siegel, please. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a couple updates. I wanted to send out a thank you to Monroe Rec Center and the Parks and Rec Department. Easter egg hunt was amazing, and it was supposed to be out on Prospect Plains with all the rain. They had to move everything indoors a couple days later, so they did amazing communication. I heard from many parents how thankful they were um, to be notified of the change. And just a couple updates from some of the commissions that I liaison to are historic Historical Preservation Commission is going to be starting up their Dye Farm open houses soon. Their first one is going to be on Sunday, May 2nd from 1 to 4 p.m. And as they did last year, they have various presentations throughout the year. And for this session, they will have a honeybee presentation by Jason Martin and also rain barrels presentation with our Environmental Commission. So please mark your calendars. Try to attend. The open houses run from May through October. So. It's always the first Sunday of each month. And then uh, just an update on our Youth Advisory Council. They have been working very hard. Again, it's our 25 students from the high school. And they've been working on a wellness fair that we're going to be hosting uh, at the Senior Center on May 11th. And the students have been working with the Middlesex County Division of Addiction and Mental Health Planning, our Monroe Township Health Advisory Commission, our EMS departments, the police department, so they've been doing a lot of work to build this event. It's going to be a day filled with presentations on opioid addiction, youth mental health awareness, and we'll have several vendors and services around health and wellness. And we're also partnering with Robert Wood Johnson. So please mark your calendars. Come see the hard work that the students have been pulling together to bring this event for the students. And then I did want to mention one item that I saw um, on the library event page and oh, and actually today is the library open 1989 on this day. But there was a program that I wanted to highlight. Um, it's a hybrid session on know your local government. I know when I wander through town and talk to people, this is something that a lot of 
our community members don't really know the structure of our government and how we're set up and how we work in Monroe. So there's a session on Wednesday, April 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. The League of Women Voters will be leading the presentation and will cover topics of an overview of the structure of local government, voting, and where we'll share specifics around Monroe Township. So uh, I just wanted to highlight that, mark your calendars, and please check the library website for some more information about registration. Thank, Thank you. you. Back to my stream right over here, Councilman DePiro. Thank you, Council President. You're welcome. Okay, uh, um, I want to start off with um, Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, they had a 40th anniversary for uh, 40 years. And uh, Tom Weatherall, I watched on, uh, on New Jersey News, his interview, and he, um, he was grateful to, and, and, and with the donations made and all the wishes. And he said in the 40 years of history of Make-A-Wish, the uh, past 10 years, they were able to uh, make the same wishes that they've done in the first 30 years. So to see, as we, as we just saw a resident from Monroe, um, in Rossmore, help help the community in in uh, in a in a uh, situation which was life or death, and he went into a burning house. Um, to see residents make donations to the senior center, uh, and to, to you know, we should have a plaque for for these people in that building, and we should definitely appreciate in all different ways that people help in each other, and to have the Make a Wish in our in our hometown. It's a very, it's an asset, it's very important. And uh, you go, I go there on Sundays every once in a while um, and, they, and they, have, they have incredible events for children with cancer or different walks. They do so much stuff and it's just here, right here in our town. So I just wanted to put a shout out to them and thank them for everything that they do and for the people that make donations to that Make-A-Wish. Um, also, I know our, our administration and some of our directors met with uh, fire district number one. The volunteers are having a 75th uh, anniversary party in the uh, Thompson Park. It's gonna be on August 10th at two o'clock by the lake. And if anybody, I brought some, some flyers and some postcards. If there's any businesses that would like to make donations, if there's anyone that would like to be part of that, they are gonna have some, food trucks and I know they're gonna have some entertainment and it's something that brings the community together. I remember attending one a few years back in Jamesburg at the 1976 one and it was uh, very, I still remember like it was yesterday. I have the mugs that, that I purchased when I was a teenager back then and it's something that you remember and to bring the community together like that is just an, another way to say Monroe is, uh, is definitely second to none, as uh, our Mayor Pucci used to say all the time. I wanted to ask a question. Well 25, did, did Well 25 come within budget? Um, Council President, I may ask Joe to come up. Um, I believe we're in budget. I know there's a couple items they're doing to get it open. Joe, do you wanna come up and talk about Well 25? For those of you who don't know, it's our newest well that'll be coming on. It's at the intersection of uh, Machaponics and Spotswood English Town Road. It looks like that nice building offset to the back if you've, if you've seen it, if you've driven by. Is that on, Joe? Who the heck knows? I know it. There you go. Relatively simple answer, Councilman. Uh, yes, it is in budget. That, I want to say thank you to you and your administration and your staff because to do construction today, that is something that, uh, history that I have in construction and I'm still learning to try to get stuff done within budget. I wanna say thank you as a taxpayer, thank you as an elected official. And I think that's something that needs to be, uh, our residents need to know that, um, you know, Joe, Joe works day and night for us and weekends as well. I wanna say thank you and for putting that project, a project that size, to do within budget is amazing. It's very, very well appreciated, and I just wanted to give a shout out to you and your administration for doing that. And Joe, another thing while you're there, I also want to thank you guys for fixing a leak on Schoolhouse Road. 
That's something that I've been asking for months um, on what's going on. I understand we're waiting for a clamp. We didn't need to use that clamp. And I just want to say thank you very much for doing that, that fix in-house again. So thank you, Joe. Thank you. And, and I attended a um, zoning board meeting here, and people were asking, like, where's the screens? Where's the screens? So I know that I asked that question, um, trying to get it within the budget, and I believe we do have money in the budget um, for this year. So Alan, I asked him a month ago or so, we was renovating the, the municipal building here, and so my question is, Where how's the screens? Yeah, so I will uh, follow up with our tech department. It is something we're gonna put in two screens on either side. Um, we were waiting for the room to be finished before we um, you know, put it in, but it'll be something that'll certainly be happening in the, uh, in the coming months. And not only could we show PowerPoints and other things on the screens, but you could actually show um, whatever's on YouTube while you're watching the meeting. Right, right. Um, you know, uh, whatever anyone is seeing on YouTube in real time, if there are documents that can be zoomed in on. Yeah. I, I know that I noticed that the meeting had um, residents uh, downstairs and upstairs. The zoning board might want to consider putting it in a bigger building, possibly the senior center. In the past, we went to uh, the, the schools, but now we have the senior center. I know it's not our decision; it's the zoning board's decision. Uh, but it might just be a suggestion, so everybody can all be in one room, and uh, maybe we get screens at the senior center also as well. But uh, I just wanted to. Uh, to, to ask where the screens are. Thank you. And I also noticed from Federal Road to Route 33, uh, the paving, Middles, Middlesex County, I know they're on Applegarth Road, but that section from 33 to Federal Road, if we can ask our engineer to uh, take a look at that along with the county engineer, the, uh, the pavement it seems a little, little rough there. Excuse me, Council President, what road? Uh, Applegarth or Perineville? Perineville Road. Perineville? From Federal to 33. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, thank you. Um, also, do we have any update on the NJGOT? I know we had a truck traffic um, study that was approved mm -hmm. uh, by the, by the uh, county and also by the uh, town, but NJGOT for truck traffic on Applegarth, Prospect, and Cranberry Station. Is there any updates on that? Right. If I could, Please. Council President. So the county is moving forward on that, and so you'll start to see some new signage going up. We'll also, as a council, we'll be presenting to the council um, some weight restrictions coming up um, in the next month or two that are tied to um, suggestions that were made within the very plan done by NJDOT and the Metropolitan Planning Organization, so we're certainly excited about that. If you look at the uh, details of the plan, there's a multi-phase project, and some of the early action items will be seen uh, within the next one to two, maybe three years happening, and they're all listed within and inside the uh, the the, uh, the uh, entire report. Thank you. And I also noticed on a bill list that some of our police officers went to uh, to traffic, uh, heavy highway traffic classes, seminars. So hopefully, um, our new chief will set up some uh, truck uh, weight weight limit. Uh, you know, testings and, and stops for brakes and tires, along with the uh, state police. And if we can get that done in our community, it's, it's, it's definitely needed because the trucks are, they're barreling through Monroe on almost every road that I travel. So I would like to see if we can get some kind of, some kind of cooperation working with the state police on a, a truck, either on Forsgate Drive, Applegarth, there are, there's so many roads that there are trucks all over, including Route 33. Uh, I had a question in reference to capital improvements. Detention basin, uh, I know we increased the contract amount. How many detention basins do we have now? Um, I believe it's about 78, but I'd have to check to get the exact number because we just added a few. We have a uh, detention basin trust fund, which I believe has about $1.4 million in it. Right. Can we use any of that money for, like, actually – doing improvements on the flooding because it seems like we're concerned when we get in one inch, two inch, three inches of rain and, you know, get the pumps out, get the pumps ready. And uh, at the fire company, I know we're always, we're always going to certain areas uh, with pumps. 
And is there anything that we can actually get out there? And uh, Mosquito Control used to do the, the uh, cleaning of the ditches. And uh, I know wetlands came in in you know, July 1 of 87. But if there's something that we can get out there and actually start improving the size of pipes and, and, and furthermore doing, doing some actual improvements, I, I think that's something that the council, sh we should really be working with um, the county, uh, state, because when you start closing down State Highway Route 33, almost every, seems like every time we get two or three inches of rain and the residents that live in that, that neighborhood, um, it's almost like I feel like I live down the Jersey Shore, you know, when, when, when I was down there when I was a kid. The roads were flooded, and we, we thought it was fun. But this is a, this is something that seems to be growing in our community, the flooding. So if there's something that we can do on actually getting work done, uh, I think it's something that we got to look at for capital improvements. Uh, April 16th, uh, between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m., the Board of uh, Education's election. And I want to uh, put a shout out. I want to say to our clerk's office, you know, you guys are going to be working hard, as always, you know, with the poll workers and 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 also with the, the locations. But that's something that everybody, I say it, everybody complains, but one out of five come out and vote. So the ballots are already out. The uh, early voting's out. So please get out and, and vote. Uh, the mailbox is open. You know, for at the library, put your ballots in, and and I just you know you can't say it enough. Get out and vote uh, on April 16th is the actual day, but the ballots are already out. And I just wanted to say to the clerk's office, thank you again for doing doing another election. Uh, and it's important, you know, there's a budget question and there's also the candidates, but it's very important to do your research because uh, we need to. To, to get out and, and, and vote. I, I was uh, reached by a few residents, uh, La Crosse. I sent an email, I sent an email, uh, I know Alan, you were on vacation, the mayor's on vacation, I know, but uh, I wanted to um, meet uh, La Crosse is requesting uh, to have some rebounding walls and on Avenue K. And I didn't get a response from anybody uh, from that email. So if you can coordinate a meeting, uh, residents are asking me to try to get some rebounding walls. I, I don't think it's, it's a big expense and all that we have going on, there's plenty, there's 40 acres there. And it's something that maybe we can put it at other locations as well, Prospect Plains, but it's something that the residents are asking for. So uh, hopefully you be able to get me a meeting uh, with the uh, lacrosse uh, people to, uh, to get them rebounding walls. I want to also put um, water and sewer was a big question last meeting. Bentley Road, uh, are there any improve, uh, improvement uh, plan or do we have any updates on what's going on? Did anybody communicate with those residents? Yes, please. Council President, if I could. So I think the answer um, from that meeting um, is, is, is still pretty much the same. Um, as part of the approval, um, the planning board, I believe, uh, required the developer who would be doing work in that area on the north side of Route 33 to bring the sewer and water lines uh, past Bentley Road. Um, but I don't believe we have a specific timeline of when that's going to happen yet. Um, right. So we're we're still sort of in that same position um, as the answer from last you know from last month. So nobody responded to the residents then. Well, I think that's what we said last month. I, there's no further update. Okay. than that information right. I mean if all right because be uh, we all received an email from a resident in uh, country view about buses and I don't I said this at March 4th meeting I said it, I sent an email on March 5th Alan um, to, to I forget exactly who I sent it to but I know I always send it address it to you and Kevin as sure. as well um, but it, it went on and answered um, if we answer residents um, so I don't want to respond to a resident, especially when they address it to our mayor. I, I don't respond in respect because I, I wait for either the mayor or administration. But I have no idea, and I've been saying it month after month, I have no idea 
if anybody's responding to our residents. I was told under the Sunshine Law, you know, we can't respond. Um, but I just have no idea. Can we get a system uh, that you can let our residents, uh, if you answer our residents, can we have a system that tells us that either give us a copy of, uh, as an elected official, I'd like to see a copy of what the answer was, because I'm, I'm receiving the questions, but I have no idea if anybody's answering. Yeah, I mean, I would just respond by saying I don't see too many emails that go to both of us. Um, but if there is something and you're not sure, you're certainly welcome to you know pick up the phone and I'm happy to answer. I think what was said at previous meetings is if the whole council's on there and we get into a uh, back and forth with the resident about what our policy is, it could become complicated um, just from a sunshine law point of view. But a phone is always available if you you know want to be sure. But I just don't feel like we get that many of those. I certainly don't. Um, but uh, if there's something, you're you know always welcome to uh, give well, me a we, call. Well, we had a we had an email in reference. I was going to read it at last meeting, and I I, cho I chose you know I was told not to read yes. it, and I didn't know if anybody responded, and that was from a resident that that addressed an issue that happened at our council yes, um, meeting, and then we just got another email from from uh, we all all of us received it from I, I mean I don't want to say the name but please don't it, it was right it was it was from a resident from villages at uh, country view Correct. asking about the buses and Correct. and we all got that Alan so the mayor got it excuse me can I just interrupt you for a sure. moment the the email you referred to last at last month's meeting was an email that I answered but I don't know that well you, I would assume that we have a level of trust in, among us. You asked, I answered it. It was addressed to me, and I answered it. It was addressed to me also. I, but I answered. But, uh, I but certainly I, answered. I, I, I didn't I, assume whether you answered or you're not. I'm simply telling you that I answered the email. Okay, but what all I'm asking for is if we all get addressed to an email, they ask us a question. If we don't. I personally don't know if anybody's answering. I don't want to assume somebody answers. When I when I when I go out to the public and they say, they say, oh, I didn't never heard from the mayor. I never heard from the administration. I don't know what to say. I don't want to sit, speak out of turn. All I'm saying is, if we send an answer, just send the. I, can I get a copy of what we sent to the residents? I've been sitting here for six years, and I'm and I'm trying to understand, as an elected official. If somebody asks us a question, how do I know if it got answered? That's all I'm asking. Hi, um, Councilman. So when you had previously, we talked about the violation of Sunshine Law, we can't get into the situation where we're copying everybody on the responses, right? Um, I think that when we all check in, as we do before the council meeting, we, you know, people can, can tell you, as Council President stated, she had responded to that. Now, a lot of times, as you, as you know, as a Councilman, that a lot of times people don't have a question. They just have a comment. And a lot of times if there is just a comment, it's duly noted, and then it's it's taken on. But if there's a question, I you know, I am told that either the council president or the or the business rate responds to it. So what ends up happening is is that, you know, if if while you while you would like to know, as council president said, if there's the trust in there, you guys can talk about it, but not to copy, because then we're getting into that same situation of the violation of the Sunshine Law, because it's almost like you're debating someone's private conver private question out with the other council members, and you have a quorum on email. So so when we get our packet, when we get our That's a public. Agenda, it's your public our, we agenda. Get our agenda we, we can get that because it's public. It's a public agenda, right. Okay, so when someone asks us a question and addresses the mayor and all the council, then that, that's, is that public? So No, so what ends up happening is, I think a lot of the people in the public don't realize that, right? So what ends up happening inadvertently, sometimes council people respond and all the rest of the council people are there. That's a violation because every time there is, there is a question that comes out, we have, to, we have to remember the regulations and the notice provisions, right, in the law. So that's all that is, and like, and like I said, if council president is stating that you guys do have the trust and you guys can exchange that, maybe check in and just see, okay, hey, I got these emails, is there anything I can do? You know, that kind of thing. Okay, so the, so the, we have, on BFI, we have like 58 emails. Mm -hmm. So that's considered public. 
Well, I don't know all those BFI emails. I don't know if they're between attorneys. I don't know because it's my understanding there's litigation on there. So right. if you want to specifically talk about BFI, you know, and I can't comment on litigation, we can go offline and you can tell me specifically which email you consider as public or subject to attorney-client privilege. All right. Well, okay? Just, all right. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Your mic's off. I just have a few items I'd just like to touch on. Um, one thing is our Human Relations Committee is a very important month. Um, one thing, it's uh, Arab Heritage Month, which we as Americans want to remember all our people here in the uh, United States and Monroe with Arab Heritage. Um, something important also, April 28th, I've said this three, three um, months in a row, we're having a Holocaust Remembrance Day at the Senior Center. It's at 2 o'clock um, on the 28th. That should be a really nice program with some Holocaust um, survivors, which are getting less and less, obviously, every year. So we have to honor them now. P please join us there. Um, w another thing um, that we're doing in the future for the uh, human relations is uh, Juneteenth. Juneteenth. That's um, for anybody, that's June 19th. So it's easy to remember the date, June 19th. We're planning a, a program at the library. So please join us. It's going to be during the day. I'm not sure of the hours. I think it's from 10 to 1, but um, it's not written in stone yet. But that's going to be at the library celebrating um, um, Juneteenth. Uh, one of the things that I get constantly asked as a councilman is uh, my opinion on um, what's going on in Gaza and um, with Israel and being a local council uh, member. I really don't want to weigh in on it too much, um, but it does come up in human relations quite a bit. But I'd like to just say that uh, there's no room for anti-Islamic phobia or anti-Semitism in, in Monroe or the United States. And uh, we do have to separate what's going on there from Muslims here and Jews here. And remember that no one here is responsible for what's going on in the rest of the world, whether it be a terrorist, whether it be what's going on in the Gaza. I just felt I had to mention something about that. It's very important, very important part of my life, something I agonize on every day. Um, next on my list, I'm on the senior uh, aging committee. Um, I just want to run by that last year we had l almost 1,200 new members in the senior center. So that's just telling you how, how it grows. The senior center is growing like crazy. It's hard for them to handle the situation, so I'd like everybody to be patient with them. They're doing a great job. Just to give you an idea, for the month of February, they had over 6,000 people register for different events and dances and what, what have you. It's a lot of people for uh, the people there to handle. Um, and what's happening is um, some of the people that attend think that their specific problems are, they can do whatever they want. Let me put it that way. This Give me an example. There's no food allowed in the senior center, only in specific areas. So I'm just reaching out to everybody, well, the seniors obviously, please pl try to obey the rules so we don't give the people that work there a hard time. Very important. They have a hard enough job as it is to clean up coffee and donuts off the floor all over the place. Um, and also, please carpool. Any, uh, anybody watching this, or there's not that many senior citizens here tonight. But uh, parking is a situation over there, so we're always having issues with parking, and we are always have issues with handicapped parking at the senior center. So as much carpooling as we can, that would be great. Um, I'm on the uh, American Disabilities Act um, committee. Uh, there was no real issues in town. Every month we go over all the different um, areas of the town getting reports to find out if anybody has any issues about disabled parking or ramps or anything. Luckily, this past month, there was really nothing um, nothing happened that was uh, of any consequence. I would, just li would like to mention that the uh, MCAT uh, 
publishes this uh, little booklet that if anybody wants to know anything about ri a rider guide for what's available to seniors or handicapped people, this is published by the county. It's available. You can call the county. You can call me and I'll get you a copy, but there are plenty of options for handicapped and disabled people. Um, please take advantage of what we have in this county. It's super important. Um, that's about it. Thanks so much and uh, wishing everybody a happy spring. Hopefully we'll get some warm weather very soon. Thank you, Council President. How are we doing tonight? Um, I'm uh, the Council Liaison to the Rec Advisory Committee. We just had a meeting again this past month. I see my uh, co-member Garrett and Mr. Busman there. Um, Charlie had mentioned lacrosse and, and a tremendous increase in popularity. Uh, the lacrosse representative mentioned, I think we have 150 uh, kids involved with our lacrosse recreation program, which is an all-time record high for Monroe. Um, I didn't hear them talk about anything with rebounding walls or anything, but uh, that's certainly something we could bring up and talk to Mary Lang. She's She's usually on the ball when it comes to those kind of requests and things, but uh, it could have been something that just wasn't brought up at the last meeting, but it uh, just shows again, popularity of all of our stuff. It's now around that time for registering for uh, spring sports. So if you have anybody that's interested that you know of, now's the time to get it out. I've already seen them listed over the last few weeks. So uh, it's almost gonna be time to start the seasons. And again, you look at thousands of kids, over 1,100 in soccer alone, you know, just really, really do a good job. And and I always want to throw out there my, my particular thanks to all the volunteers because all the people that run these programs, the, the coaches and everybody and the people with the different divisions, they're all parents, they're all volunteers, they're all out there to help the kids of Monroe. And, and it's just a great thing, and you, you can't thank them enough. They don't get paid a penny for doing it, uh, but they do volunteer their time and uh, endless and endless hours. So that was one thing. Um, I would echo uh, what Councilman uh, said earlier. April 16th is the uh, Board of Ed election. Everyone go out and vote. If you don't vote, you don't have any right to complain about what's going on. So everybody has that right, and it's, it's always important to do. Um, April 27th, uh, they're going to be doing the, the free seedlings at the library. So anyone that's interested in, uh, uh, helping to, you know, continue environmentally help our town by planting, uh, trees and things like that. It doesn't cost you a penny. You go out there and get your seedlings and you could plant them. The spring's a great time to do that. Um, also, May tw now getting a little bit ahead. May twenty seventh are uh, they're having? Let me put it this way: they have a Memorial Day parade in uh, Jamesburg, and at the meeting it was mentioned that they're looking for different groups, and certainly groups from Monroe are welcome to join in. I asked that it be mentioned, so I, I told them I would mention it. So anybody to whatever it might be, I believe. Uh, uh, Christine Gandy is one of the people uh, uh, with our rec advisory who uh, is sort of taking charge of that. So if anybody needs a contact, you ask me, I'll get your contact information. Um, just a couple of other small things. Um, uh, we were talking about charging stations now. It, it almost gets me a little bit excited. We're starting to move into the future a little bit. So um, I would uh, concur with the comments by Dr. Parab. I realized that this, this particular deal was a, a state grant and we kind of were happy to get what we're getting. We're not going to complain. But as we go forward, probably in the future, there's going to be some more opportunities that, that come available to us. And if we do, let's consider getting the ones that charge the fastest because that's, it's not just going to help one person. It's going to help everybody in town and, and it'll be less fights of people complain, well, yeah, your car has been there for all this while. Get the best that you can and think ahead and try and be progressive. And in that same line, I, I always, um, I brought this up before, and I do understand that most of the items that we get in town are, are purchased through our cooperatives, but I would always encourage to also consider trying to purchase electric vehicles. 
because in the long run, it's what we need. You know, you, you look at the extreme weather that we have out there now and all these storms, this is the way to go. So you have electric vehicles, maybe we get some more electric charging stations that fast charge. And, you know, in the long run, it'll probably save the town, but it's something to look at. I understand right now, and I, from what I've heard, at least the electric stuff is almost a little bit too far, a little too expensive in between, but I think we should do some comparison each and every time, you know, just to make sure and, and not just accept what uh, what's always out there just with the state and stuff like that. So um, that was something else I wanted to say. Um, it's nice to see spring. Um, one of my favorite movies is Field of Dreams, and they talk about, you know, baseball is eternal. It, it comes, and, and it's that time of year. And so I was so happy until I watched the Mets' first three games, and uh, that was the end of that. But, but anyhow, I hope everybody has a great spring. Get out there. The weather will hopefully get nicer, and, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a you know, good time moving forward. So thank you, for, Madam President. Appreciate it. Yeah. Mike, I wanted to say thank you to the mayor because both Councilman Markell and I had the opportunity to meet with a woman who lives in Rossmore who's 102 years old. And so we had that opportunity and she was not only, um, uh, she was alert, oriented and present in the moment and Kyle was there to take some pictures and she thought he was really cute. <laughs> and we had a wonderful birthday cake. <laughs> and I re just know that we left there smiling that this woman was so participating in our world and it truly was wonderful to be there. So I say thank you for giving me this opportunity. I must have smiled for several hours afterwards at, at the joy she brought us just by seeing her. So with that, Mr. Mayor, your report, please, sir. Uh, thank you, Council. Thank you, Council <laughs> President, for allowing me the opportunity to provide some commentary, reports, um, you did the 102 year old. I did the, only the 98. Um, <laughs> nice gentleman, veteran uh, from uh, World War II, Cy Lipper. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Cy um, in, in next month's meeting uh, in regards to his next deployment. So that's the teaser I leave with you. Um, obviously, some of the items were mentioned, so I'll go quickly through. Some of my thoughts here. Uh, about two weeks ago, I attended a um, roundtable with the State Attorney General, Matt Placken, uh, at the East Brunswick Magnet, Magnet School to talk about um, uh, home invasions, car thefts. Um, given the opportunity to speak, I brought up the, uh, the issue that I think is the, the larger uh, treetops 20,000 view of, of crime is that um, mostly juveniles are performing as the bad actor and they go back on onto the street so I had mentioned about um, potential reform any type of uh, legislation and that um, that thought was echoed by a number of the mayors that were in attendance um, besides myself, Edison, New Brunswick, North Brunswick, Woodbridge, um, Metuchen was there as well. Um, and again, that was the overriding theme was the juveniles performing as the bad actors and there's no repercussions. So that was certainly strongly voiced by all the mayors in attendance. Um, speaking of uh, World War II veteran, um, Monroe resident Seymour Newsombaum uh, received the Congressional Medal of Honor on March 21st in Congress. Uh, for those of you who uh, do not know Seymour, we were graced with his presence here last year in which he was part of something called the Ghost Army. 
which until just recently was unheard of. It was buried in, in the history, buried in the secrecy of what they did, and uh, we're just proud that uh, Seymour was, was down in, in D.C. to receive such a, uh, such a uh, awarding um, you know, uh, medal. Um, this past month, I do want to congratulate uh, Fire Districts 2 and 3. Each of them were awarded a 75000 k grant. This is the second year that they received it. I do want to congratulate them uh, for, uh, for, again, going above and beyond, trying to help in, um, in their budgetary process. Um, and I'm going to mention a little bit about um, grants shortly. Uh, I also do want to reiterate something I mentioned last month regarding our flock cameras. Uh, we have now increased from 10 to 20. And speaking with our police, uh, it is um, showing that it works. We have been able to um, catch people uh, before nefarious acts are performed. So again, it's something that I know the council, myself, the administration, most of all the police were something that we thought, we thought was very, very important. Also hearing from the citizens about the increase of the, uh, of the cameras, and this is something that uh, besides that, the crime prevention um, information sessions will continue again. We just had two, at least last month, and we will continue to have those because again, information is power to protect yourself. Uh, charging stations were mentioned. Uh, I do just one, one uh, just to be thankful for the $33,000 donation to the Senior Center by the state of uh, John Cristiano. As you all know, the Senior Center is a great place um, for our residents to use and any enhancements, any benefits we can get. And obviously it was something very special to, um, to, to John and we do want to. I do want to personally thank him and his family uh, for that donation. And again, we really shouldn't minimize um, getting grants and the funding. Um, and you know, yeah, you want to you know throw it under. Oh, it's it's, a, it's taxpayer money, regardless, Peter and Paul. However, it takes a keen administration uh, to be on top of it, uh, to identify it, that there are resources out there and then obviously to act on it. So it shouldn't be minimized. It is something that is very, very important and it helps us uh, govern. It helps us control the budget and it helps the citizens um, get some of those wants and their needs. So I did wanna make that um, point. Some upcoming events, uh, the mayor's bike ride is Friday, April 26th, 6th at six o'clock starting at Avenue K Park. There's gonna be a one mile loop and then a four mile loop. Um, because of the weather, I have not been biking as much as I would like. Uh, so uh, I gotta prepare for that. I've got to show off these legs that I got. Um, it was also mentioned about the uh, on uh, Sunday, April 28th uh, at the two o'clock is the uh, Rickless Holocaust Memorial uh, program. Um, I hope you can attend. Uh, what else? April 30th. Uh, certainly, I would like to invite invite any veterans uh, attend the showing of the movie The Last Full Measure at the Stonebridge Ballroom at six o'clock. If you're interested, please call my office. This is something that the Stonebridge veterans uh, started last year in working with all of the other veteran groups in, in town uh, to get together and, uh, and just watch a movie. It was a great event last, uh, last year and looking forward to the event on, for the veterans on, uh, on the 30th of April. Um, one item is also for our youth, the Police Youth Academy is July, April 8th through the 12th. It's for sixth and seventh graders. Again, if you're interested, please reach out to um, Town Hall. And uh, yes, it is spring season. Yes, the Mets are 0-3. I wasn't expecting them to do anything anyhow. Uh, but it is that spring season, season for sports, season for allergies. Uh, but it's also just as the start of the season to enjoy what um, what we have here in Monroe Township. So thank you kindly. There you go. I'm on. We'll move to the public comment section of our meeting.
I would like a motion to open public comment section, please. Motion. Thank you. May I have a second on that? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Sir, remember your name and address for our record and five minutes per speaker. George Gunkelman, Monroe Township. On March 5th, I went to a school board meeting, which was a budget presentation. Um, it was a typical budget uh, um, presentation, I would say. Um, on the agenda and repeated in the meeting was that the regular meeting of the school board was to be on March 27th. I went home put it on my, in my agenda on the schedule and thought, you know, it's only a few weeks away, no big deal. They held a meeting on March 21st. And I guess legally they had enough time to change the notice of it, but it's become all too typical of how they're operating, the school board I'm talking about. Two months earlier, they had someone resign and they had to appoint a temporary new member. They did that entirely out of any of the recommended practices, basically because the county superintendent didn't want to engage and conflict with them. They didn't hold any interviews with any of the people that came forward to be candidates they just appointed someone that they wanted to appoint. And no explanation, no anything. It's really hard to be supportive of what goes on over there. As much as um, pro-education, it's never had a budget issue or a referendum that I didn't vote for. But this is getting to be a little bit hard to take when they just change meetings for, I guess, you know, when I looked online to see w what there was in the meeting. Now the camera placement doesn't show everybody in the room, but there were very few people there, which is not entirely uncommon, but it would seem to be less than usual. Maybe that's their objective. I don't know, but it's become really hard to be supportive. There was a con I'm, I'm going to move on I'm, to everybody's relief, I'm sure. <laughs> um, there was a, supposedly a county study going on about how we're going to handle storm management. And uh, earlier questions, they said we were waiting for the county study. And I don't know. I haven't heard anything yet. I haven't seen anything um, anywhere. So I'm curious where we stand on that. And as far as our, our basins are concerned and the maintenance of them and the, and the fund that we have in reserve, possibly we can look at some of the basins and, um, and, and see if we can either make them deeper or at least clean the silt, get them back to their original design parameters of what they were supposed to be able to do and the capacity they were supposed to have. Because this flooding is becoming a little bit too frequent, too often. And, you know, this time I don't think anybody was seriously hurt. But, you know, it's, it's just a matter of time where road flooding people don't see in advance. And if it happens at night, uh, you know, it, it could get up into a very serious accident risk. So we need to look at it, and, we, and if the county is doing some work on it, we need to prod them a bit to get find out what they're doing in our area and where, where they end and where we begin. Uh, because clearly the old, the old design parameters for stormwater management are inadequate. They're not working. We have flooding. Um, I just wanted to say in, in support, uh, 
many of us were at that zoning board meeting um, last month. And it would be helpful, and I see in other towns where there are screens and we can see the presentations that are made. I, I appreciate that the presentations are made to the boards, but the public goes and we don't get to see it. Thank you, so. for, your, thank you for your comments. This morning, I was happy to note at the entrance of my rigid community on Half Acre Road, water drainage system had an issue and we had puddles of water for several years during heavy rain. At this intersection, students from middle school, high school take buses to the school and safety and inconvenience is issue. I informed our public work department, I took pictures and last Saturday I sent them and they were here this morning and cleaned up the clog inside the drain and I received a call. I was so happy. Now the system has been told to be working, so we thank again our Public Staff Works Division for their mm -hmm. prompt action. So now coming on the serious note, the school district budget is for vote on April 16, and vote by mail has been mailed out. My humble request to Monroe community, seniors and young families, youngsters to vote yes on the budget, the tax increase will be $1.24 per year based on average assessed home value of $333,000. That is $2 per month. The budget, if it is not voted, is voted down. Please note the impact. It will have impact on 1,100 students and their families as the courtesy busing in the radius of two miles to two and a half miles for all our schools will be cut off. Not good for children or their parents. Our children have to walk two miles or the parents have to drop them. A impact on our parents' job because they have to spend time. School, school busing of our children out of township for various athletic sports and music competition will be cut. Not good. Clubs in the high school, middle school, which are academic, cultural, civic, forth, will be, so forth will be cut. The hiring of new teachers for autism, special education, language, technology, business will be cut, including security staff. Impact to education and security. We request, I request personally, vote yes for the budget for our children. The tax increase is just $2 per year per month on average assist have house value of 330,000 in our township. Keep smile, positivity, and happiness in our children. I went to and testified in the Senate Budget Committee, and I said to them, the funding formula takes into consideration income of our seniors, which are 50% of our population, and that raises the equalization aid calculation and we get zero dollar. So average population in our state is 20% across. So I said, you put a correction factor. Don't punish us because we have so many seniors. So I'm going to sit with Senator Greenstein and take the formula and explain it is very complex and our friends have developed that. So we get educated and we implement. So thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to address us, please come forward. And again, please, your name and address for our records. Lucio. Lucio Panos Monroe. Um, the attachment A, I assume one of you will give it to me at the end of the meeting. It's right oh, there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to the clerk's office. Your poll, this poll work, and you were thrown a monk, they were thrown a monkey wrench in the last two weeks about direct deposit, and uh, you know, so Lorena is very good at that, and I'm sure you know she is. But thank you, and it's still not over yet. It's by the time they figure that one out. Um, the field of dreams. 
that was a good movie. In fact, I'm wondering if that philosophy is used with the electrical vehicles here. You know, build a build a charging station, and then maybe we'll get cars. They will come. Build it, and they will come. Well, you know, it's nice to hear those words, except you don't live them. And you know, if, if you were so opposed to, you know, not getting this, we spent over a million dollars in the last six months on vehicles that are not electrical in this township. Won't know. You're allowed to buck it, you know? You're allowed to buck the system if you truly believe, vote with your heart. So, you know, that is nice. I suggest that I understand the new the new trucks that were purchased. They were old, they were needed. Have some foresight and look into see, okay, check with the road department. How are your vehicles? So let's put it six months in advance, order some new trucks because you know that one's gonna get another 30,000 miles on it. You can't just talk the talk. You gotta walk the walk. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address this, please come forward. Michelle Arminio, 9 Nathaniel Street. I just wanna go back to the agenda again. Um, Mr. Weinberg uh, said it, and I apologize, I didn't write it down fast enough regarding uh, Resolution 125 and the basins, the wet basin maintenance. Now, I know we have a fund, um, a trust fund for that. Is there an average that the developers uh, contribute to that fund? Um, Please. So I, I believe that there's a formula in our code based on the number of... Uh, units and the size of the basin that create a criteria where they have to put the money up front into this trust fund which is then used to manage the basins some of which are our own and some of which we've we've taken over so it's in our code i don't have it at my fingertips okay. no, but, but it's in our code okay yes. and may i ask um uh, council yeah. president mr weinberg to give me that number again that's in the trust fund sure. at this point right, i'll have, have to look at our latest okay. afs trust. my latest recollection was about 1.4 million dollars <laughs> Okay. All right. And um, I, you know, one of one of the other members of the public mentioned about uh, flooding, and especially if we're getting flooding on 33, we're putting a lot of huge buildings that previously all of that land. Now I, I get it that is commercial, and that's where we should be putting these things, but all these buildings are really transferring all that water into our streets. And it, it, you know, we have to really be cognizant. I mean, of of how you know, we, well, we want the business, we want the tax rateables, but we also don't want the damage that um, huge. I think they're like hundreds of thousands of square foot of, of buildings are displacing our water um, onto the streets, onto the neighbors. I know people on, on Butcher Drive and and people who have been near large. Um, residential building, uh, it, it's just really been impacting them. And I hope that going forward, our planning board and our zoning board has a mission of really protecting the residents that are already here, the quality of the community. Because I've seen over the years, you know, and look, every applicant has a right to be heard, has a right to do what they want with their land um, within, or, within our ordinances. But I also have seen a pattern where applicants come in they don't really live here they may own the land but they come in and ask for many many variances many waivers we don't have to give them approvals or use variances on a, a, the large scale that they ask for i would ask that the protection first be for the community and for the residents and not necessarily for people asking for enormous variances. I mean, sometimes we have an ordinance that says you need 50 feet for something as a setback, and the people want a waiver to put it only five feet of setback. I mean, there should be a mission, in, and I asked the council and, and Mayor Delina to please make sure our planning board and our zoning board protects the residents and protects our environment and our resources, first and foremost. Um, the next one, uh, question I have is on the ordinance um, that you proposed. 
for ordinance uh, 007 for the signaling. It's approximately $2 million, it's a little over $2 million. Is that for soft costs or is that for the whole development of that property and area? That's for the whole development of the property, but it doesn't include, as I mentioned earlier, the approximately $300,000 that was spent for land acquisition. Okay, so land acquisition, but is any of this for soft costs also? And is this going, um, wh wh so, who's getting the money? <laughs> right, so the county's the lead on the project, so they upfront all the money. Um, the soft costs associated with it are us splitting the uh, engineering and design of the project, which I mentioned was 270 for our half. Okay. Um, they pay the full 100% of construction administration. That is the building of the project, which is also a soft cost. We split the, uh, the uh, bid that went out to actually build it, um, which is the 3.5 million cut in half to 175, um, and then we cover uh, police. So our all in is 2.243 million plus the 300, uh, two, 200,000 I mentioned earlier for up okay. allowance for police. All right, I thank you very much. No problem. Thank you, anyone else wishing to address us? Please come forward. Your name and address for our records again, please. Gazala Bora, One Miko Drive. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and I want to thank you, uh, Mayor Delina, and all the other council members and the administration for giving me this opportunity to address not just you, but also the public that is present here and those watching online. Um, I'm here today not just as a resident, and I apologize I'm going to read because I did not want to lose track of my thoughts. Um, I'm here not only as a resident, but also as the Vice President of the Monroe Township Board of Education. I would like to start by expressing my heart heartfelt gratitude for the two shared services agreement that the Township has signed with the Board of Ed, allowing us to address much needed roof repairs and HVAC replacements at the Apple God School and to purchase and operate the web programming server to broadcast meetings like this, the Board of Ed meeting, and many other local event events and happenings. Even though we have been unsuccessful in passing the referendum to address the needs of the school district, with your help, we have been able to address at least one of the most pressing infrastructure needs in our school system, which is the Applegar School. So while we have said it in our public meetings, I would like to take this opportunity that I'm here in person to thank you all for your support. And I um, want to now share what's going on with the budget. Last year, when the board approved the budget for school year 2023-2024, the business administrator and the superintendent advised the board that it had been a challenge to balance the budget under the 2% tax levy cap, and they were afraid that they will not be able to do the same for 2024-2025 school year. Their words came true. They had recommended at that time that if the board did not want to make cuts, like the school districts around us were having to make last year because they were caught off guard, we should proactively move the school elections to April as that is the only time we can ask the public to vote on the school budget for the upcoming year and not in the November elections. This is the third year of my term as a board member and having seen several neighboring districts like Robbinsville and South Brunswick go through these cuts last year and face a huge public uproar I also felt strongly that this decision should lie with the taxpayers. Board members represent the community in the daily governance, and we do our best to be fiscally responsible while growing student success. But cuts like these are a huge decision, and the stakeholders should have a say in it. Record high inflation, highly inag inadequate state funding with zero dollars in equalization aid, and dwindling surplus all make it hard to continue to provide the same quality of programs and services while staying under 2% cap. This shortage did not happen overnight. In fact, the writing has been on the wall since 2020 when our former BA made the community aware that we may no longer be able to balance the budget under 2% cap. Soon after he said that, um, COVID happened and the district got a wave of COVID grants like all others around us, and it helped us tie through and balance the budget with additional revenue sources, like the COVID grants. That is all gone, and today I sit here making a plea to the taxpayers to come out on April 16th in support of the 7,000 students of Monroe. 
to ensure that we don't cut any of our programs and services. I'm here to ask support from the leaders in this room and any resident listening right now. Help us spread the word. Help us get the support our students need. We are short by $2.7 million, and if we cannot get this question to pass on April 16, kids in kindergarten through eighth grade living two miles from school and high schoolers living 2.5 miles away from school will lose their daily busing. The excellent school-sponsored athletic and co-curricular programs that have put Monroe on the map, not just in New Jersey, but nationally with our recent accomplishments are on the chopping block. I won't be wrong in saying that the pride and joy of the Monroe Falcon spirit will be impacted big time if the special question on the ballot on April 16th doesn't pass. Due to the rateables, the impact on the residents this year of the school budget is less than last year, even if we have to go 2% over cap. Last year, we were at 2% cap and increase in taxes on an average assessed home of 333,000 was $33. This year, even if the special budget question passes and we go above gap, the increase in taxes will be $9 less. They will be $24, annual increase will be $24. I hope we can get the support from the town's government in getting the vote out, in urging its residents to support this special question. So over 1,000 kids, thank finish you. Finish your sentence, that's it. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to address this, please come forward. Name and address for our records, please, sir. I'm Raghu Chituri, 23 Green Ash Street. Uh, good evening, council members and uh, madam president. Thank you, the mic. Good evening, madam uh, president and uh, council members. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my views and express the concerns that I have as a resident of the town. I want to thank you for your support for our school system. This township has been facing uh, overcrowding due to a gradual influx of new neighborhoods in our town. While we welcome all the uh, new incomers into town, we also have to look at what is the impact of those new neighborhood into the school system. Uh, the, the obvious problem that we are facing is school overcrowding, which has been a case for a while. We need to look at, are our schools capable enough to take those new, uh, new members into the system? We want to keep our school system competitive by keeping up to speed with other highest ranking school districts uh, in our neighborhood towns like South Brunswick and uh, Robbinsville. This requires uh, introduction of more competitive clubs, classes, courses, and hire new staff to be more competitive, which requires more budget as well. So due to an age old fold uh, fair funding formula, Monroe Mon Township is receiving uh, a less share compared to like other neighboring districts. And this number is changing often as well. Like it's not a constant dollar amount that's been uh, across all the years. So when there is an imbalance of this kind of allocation, it, 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 it challenges the school board as well in either cutting down the some of the courses or cutting down the not uh, required, uh, state required uh, programs. So one long, I mean, there can be two, two puzzle ways to address this. One long term is to work with the senators, uh, state senators, and work on the uh, fair funding formula, get a push from all the members. Uh, we need uh, help from the council members as well, and re, uh, re, re evaluate the existing formula and try to see if we can get more fair funding for Monroe Township. And the second solution is to plead you guys, like, and I want to request you guys to give us some kind of an uh, uh, avenue where we can fund uh, more programs which can keep our school district more competitive. And uh, I mean, in the challenging world, we have to be up to the speed. We don't want Mundo to be lagging behind those programs and the new uh, technologies that we are facing in the, in the current environment. Uh, as, all we, as we all know that there's a budget question that is coming up for the April 16th election. Uh, can we go above the 2% cap or not? I mean, what happens if the if majority of the people cut a vote down uh, to not to increase it? We're gonna lose uh, cut the buses, which will impact about 1,100 students. That is what I was told in the last uh, Board of Education meeting. And not only that, it's they're, they're planning to hire more 
uh, teachers, uh, some of the technology department, and some for the special needs students. So we need to we need we need to help them up to make sure we continue those programs, hire the new teachers, and keep our schools competitive. I kind of request council to come up with a workaround to provide additional funding for our schools, and we need our schools to be uh, better for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address us, please come forward now. Name and address for our records, please. Sure. Hi, I'm Beth DePiro, 404 Spotswood Gravel Hill Road in Monroe Township. Um, first of all, happy spring, everybody. And I just want to ask if at any point since the last two meetings, have you spoken about a plan for the illegal immigrants that are here? Anything? You don't, you haven't spoken about it at all? Mr. Mayor. Madam uh, Council President, um, the County of Middlesex uh, has been having ongoing meetings with uh, divisions of emergency management within uh, each of the towns of the county uh, as a just in case. Thank you. Thank you. That was all I have, but thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to address us? Please come forward now. Your name and address for our records, please. Good evening. Uh, Chrissy Skirby, 21 Preakness Drive. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Board of Education as the board president. I want to thank the council for approving both recent shared services agreement that are mutually beneficial to both the Board of Education and the municipality. The collaboration and the communication between both boards of elected officials in our town allows us to ensure that we continue to offer the best for our residents here in Monroe. Recently, I went to testify at the New Jersey State Budget and Appropriations Committee meeting. Our superintendent, board members, members of the community also gave testimony asking the state senators and assembly members to change the school funding formula going forward. I requested the state to appropriate money in next year's school budget to cover the cost of what the district is over the 2% cap. I also asked them to appropriate money for a full day kindergarten program here in Monroe that we cannot implement because we do not have the funds for it. It's important for the community to understand how a Board of Education and the Town Council operate differently. For instance, each year the Board of Education has to approve a budget. If that budget increases over 2% tax levy cap, the Board of Education must go out to the voters to approve the overage. The Board of Education cannot take a vote among their 10 member boards who approve going over the cap and the 10 member board cannot vote amongst themselves to go out to bond for any cost for any project. However, the town council is made up of five elected officials who can go out to vote for a bond for any item you wish, and you do not need to get voter approval regardless of the cost. So when the referendum failed last year, the Board of Education came to the mayor and the council and asked to help to fix Applegarth School because you had the power to be able to take a vote amongst yourselves to approve those funds. The Board of Education and many of the teachers, staff, and parents at the Applegarth School are so appreciative of this because as the years go, go by, the roof leaks get worse and worse at Applegarth, and we're very happy that this is finally going to be fixed with the Council's help. Now the Board of Education is faced with a new challenge. With the rising cost of inflation and lack of surplus used for a decade to balance the budget and stay under the 2% cap, the Board of Education has to go out to vote in order to raise the tax levy cap an additional $2.7 million. The Board of Education cannot simply take a vote to spend this money. Included in the $2.7 million are items the district feels are vital to have. However, the state classifies them as over-adequate for a thorough and efficient education. Because these are over-adequate items and over the 2% cap, the community needs to come out and vote. Please make no mistake, the Board of Education and the district do not want to cut these items. If the community comes out and votes to approve it, these items could be added back into the budget and will be a permanent increase, not needing voter approval every year. Those items include, include busing to and from school within two miles for elementary and 2.5 miles for middle school and high school. 
after school busing for clubs and extracurricular activities, busing for our athletes to and from games and practices, athletic costs such as equipment and uniforms, all costs for clubs at the middle school and high school, including stipends for advisors, increase of seven staff members, which include a teacher of autism, autism paraprofessional, ESL teacher, ESL paraprofessional, business teacher, computer science and robotics teacher, and an additional school security officer. In addition, it also allows the following facility projects, a Mill Lake roof replacement project and special services parking lot payment, paving. Without voter approval, these items will not be in next year's budget. We are asking for the town support to support our efforts in getting information out to the community. If this vote does not pass, the township will be affected as well. The traffic throughout town during drop-off and pick-up at our schools will become chaotic as there is not enough room at our schools to allow for the amount of cars that will come through. The cost of crossing guards will increase as there will be many more needed at the multitude of places students will be crossing on busy roads. Crossing guards are not an expense out of the school district budget. Additionally, when builders built developments and gave money towards the sidewalk fund and the money wasn't used for sidewalks, well, now we're going to need to use those funds to put in sidewalks where none are leading to our schools. This is not just a school district issue. This is a whole town issue. We do not want to see our schools decline in any way because when people stop wanting to move to Monroe because we no longer have the school district we once had, our property values drop. In closing, I'm asking that the council please support our schools as you have, as you have done so many times before and help us educate the community before this crucial vote. And if I have um, a couple more seconds, I just would like to let you know, um, one of the uh, members of the public commented on our meeting, we had to change our meeting at the request of the County Board of Elections because they told us we needed to get them the wording in order for them to be able to print the mail-in ballots. And that is why we changed our vote. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to address us, please come forward now. Your name and address for our records, please. Sure, Brian Fabiano, Monroe. So I, I wasn't gonna speak, um, but I wanna talk a little bit about, since a number of people talked about the school budget mm -hmm. vote that's coming on April 16th. And I'll preface it with this. I have two two children in the school system. Uh, so if, if busing and the budget pass uh, fails, my kids will be directly impacted. So I'm a parent that will feel the impacts just as my kids will. But I think it's important to understand the context of how we got here and not always be in a situation where, woe is me, we need more money, inflation is going up, you know, um, the schools are suffering. Yes, it is a systemic problem throughout the state with school districts not getting enough funding. But this Board of Education knew since last fall that they would need to go above, that they were gonna to have to go out to a special vote. They talked about it. They talked about the fact that there wouldn't be enough money in the budget. Even knowing that, they decided that it was important to give a contract extension to a superintendent who had 18 months left in her contract. This contract extension, it cost us taxpayers more money because she got a raise, she got an extension for a number of years. Fast forward a couple of months later, this past March, the board felt it was necessary to extend contracts of administrators, uh, extend contracts of non-affiliates. These are employees that are not tenured in the district, so they could be cut if the budget isn't there to support it. And they did all that before a budget vote. So to come up here and say that, you know, we need more money, yes, the school district needs more money. But you can't say that you are doing everything you want that you're that you can for the kids when you are leading these these poor decisions, um, and you are making a laughing stock out of us as as taxpayers. Furthermore, you can't come up here and 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 say you know that the, the council needs to override the taxpayers. Well, at some point, there's no point to vote anymore, if. You put a referendum out, you put a budget vote out, and the taxpayers say no, 
and the council just overrides it, well, then why do we even vote anymore? I mean, we're, we're getting away from what democracy is and, and why we have these votes and why the community plays a role. But again, because I'll, I'll, I'll be quoted uh, on Facebook tonight, I'm sure, um, so I want to get it right here, is I am a parent of, a, of, a, of children that will be affected if this budget goes down. But there's also right from wrong, and there's a way to manage a budget and to manage it properly. And if any, you know, if, if, if you've been paying attention to the meetings, you can see what's happening. And if you're not, I encourage people to go out and do their research because how can you make an informed decision on a budget vote if you don't know what you're voting on or you don't know the context behind it? Our Board of Education is mismanaged. It's been mismanaged for a while under the leadership and the board majority that's there now. Make no mistake about it. The surplus has been drained over the last three years. You can see it in the recent budget presentation that was made. So again, we need money. Many school districts need money. Um, but to come up here and phrase it in a way where, number one, we're shaming residents because they may not vote on a budget, every person's situation is different. And the fact is, it's not just a $24 a year raise. That's a permanent tax increase. We had to go to the cap plus 0.41%. So it's 2.41% is the over the budget. That's a cap. And then we went above that by another 2.41%. So the total tax bearing on the uh, uh, citizens or taxpayers here is about 4.8%. So again, the information needs to be presented clearly and, and not in a way where number one, we're shaming, but number two, it's this, this full game. The numbers are, are there. Um, and again, I, I do hope people come out and vote uh, and I do hope people support it, um, but we're not gonna fix the problems that we have by continually putting Band-Aids on it and coming to this meeting asking for you know a rescue plan uh, whether it's here or across the street, I've said it before, it all comes out of the same pocket, and that's us as taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council, please come forward now. Your name and address for our record, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Matt Gorm, 39 Helmetta Road, Monroe Township. Uh, Mayor, Councilman, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, I had the pleasure of being a teacher for Monroe Township for 37 years. I recently retired. I was the gentleman that was put on the board uh, in October, uh, and I've served on the Board of Education for since that time. Uh, as you know, it's been repeated many times tonight, we're going out for a very important vote. Uh, the figures that were reported, the $24 a year, the average assessment that will affect the homeowners, those figures are accurate, okay? So when we talk, you know, 4.2, 8.1, 7 8.8, the number is $24 a year, $2 a month. I had the pleasure of speaking uh, the other night at one of the retirement uh, over in Clearbrook. And for those residents, it will be approximately $10 a month on their average assessment. Ross Moore will be about the same as will Concordia. So in some situations, we're talking about a dollar a month a dollar a month to ensure that our students have a quality education that are that get to school safely every morning the arguing and the rhetoric and the name calling and you know the conspiracy theories are ridiculous you know i sat here tonight and i had to hear someone say that you know we moved the school board meeting like yeah, in secret in the middle of the night we just decided to do that no, we had to do that because the budget had to be into the county so the mail-out ballots could go out. There was no conspiracy. We didn't do anything wrong. I had plans for that evening too, okay? I changed my plans and I went to the meeting. As uh, Mr. Van Der uh, said before about the volunteers of Monroe, and I appreciate you saying that, with the sports programs and everything else, Councilman DePiro, thank you too for the lacrosse. Uh, I was a volunteer in this town for many, many years, whether it was football, basketball, or baseball. Mayor Delina is actually my son Luke's favorite baseball coach. So I know he put a lot of time in on those ball fields. So our children are very, very important. 
The board members that you see here tonight, we're volunteers. We are doing the best that we possibly can. We don't deserve to be publicly humiliated on Facebook pages. That should not happen, not in Monroe Township. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to address the board, please come forward. Seeing and hearing none, I'm going to call for a motion to close the public comment section, please. Motion. May I have a second on that motion? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? May I have a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Second on that, second. please. May I have a vote on that, please? Councilman Zapiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. We are adjourned. The time is 842.